Okay, how to lose weight with running. It's re it is really, really simple with running and it's the best possible thing you can do to lose weight. There's no shortcuts to losing weight. There's no, um, there's no kind of special remedy. It's as simple as this. You have to, whatever you're doing in your life, if you're kind of overweight, if you uh, run into obesity and you have issues, it has to be a lifestyle change. It's as simple as that. So you have to put things into practice in your life and change that initial motivation which everyone's motivated. Everyone's motivated to be rich. Everyone's motivated to lose weight. It's putting that initial motivation and changing that into habit, which is the discipline. And then just inserting it into your reg regime and making sure that it's a daily occurrence. This can't be, it can't be twice, twice a week you try and lose weight. It can't be uh, three, four times a week. It's got to be a daily occurrence. Cheat days. I mean, if you if you if you if you're watching this and you're into bodybuilding and you're trying to lose a little bit of fat, doing some cardio, at, at like 10, 15 minutes of cardio at the end of your, your your weight session or start of your weight session, you know in yourself that that's a joke. Maybe you warm your body up that way, but you're knowing yourself that that's a joke. You don't lose weight. It's got to be a daily habit. It's got to be all about your great sleep, great diet. So a simple first thing would be, instead of having three big meals, have smaller meals, much easier to metabolize. So you're having six, seven, eight meals in a day, smaller portions, so your body's able to get that food into it. Think of your body and your metabolism like a factory, putting good food in, so you're making healthy food choices, and then your body's very, very, very quick at metabolizing that. So where does, putting good things into your body. So don't think about, if you're working from an office, don't think about convenience. Like make sure that you're making your food and then taking that to work. So where does that start from? That starts from good choices when you go into the supermarket or good choices when you're online shopping. So eat first and then shop. Like that's, it's a really simple hack. Amazing that more people don't do it, but why would you go shopping whilst you're hungry when everything looks delicious? So again, you have to kind of like whatever your schedule is at the moment, and you can do this with, if you're watching this and you're a coach, you're a sports nutritionist or whatever, you'll, you'll know this, that if, you, if somebody comes to you and asks you, what can I do to lose weight? What can I eat to lose weight? Or how can I train to lose weight? If you ask them, okay, I, I usually do this. After, if, if you're serious about this and you want to do it, for the next two weeks, every day, write down how much sleep you've had, what time you wake up, what time you go to bed, what you do first thing in the morning, what you eat first thing in the morning, what you train, when you eat your second meal, your third meal, and just list down absolutely everything and portion size. Portion size, massive one. And we could go on all day about that, but I'm not gonna. But what does, what does 100 grams of rice look like to, to one person? And, and to another person. The only way you can tell is to, to actually physically measure that and to know what the dry weight of 100 grams of rice looks like. But we digress. The, so so if, you, if you ask somebody over a two week period to write down everything they eat and put in their body and everything they do and how they sleep and the stress at work and how that felt, people will be able to write down that. It's a great test if somebody comes to you to put together a program for them because you can test their motivation. If they'll do that, they're definitely motivated enough to get to that next stage, which is to put the right things into practice. Then, if you ask them to highlight all the good things that they're doing, highlight all the bad things that they're doing, pretty much every person that will come to you, that is motivated enough to come to you and approach you with that, that question, because it's obviously quite personal, they will tell you exactly the right way to do it. So they already have the knowledge, everyone already has the knowledge, if you've got access to, to Google, if you've got access to ChatGTP, it's very, very simple to find a great diet plan, it's actually doing it. Like personal trainers wouldn't exist, sports nutritionists wouldn't exist, nutritionists wouldn't exist if we just listen to what we already have access to. So it's putting it into practice, it's putting it into daily practice. So obviously smaller, more manageable meals that are healthy. Again, that's a whole nother topic that we could 
talk for hours about what is healthy food. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go into three re uh, three ways uh, to lose weight. Get into the habit number two. Get into the habit of waking up. Your kit's are already ready. Putting your kit on whilst you're making coffee, whilst you make it a black coffee, drinking water, you're hydrating, and then get out and train. Uh, get out and run, get out and walk, whatever it is, move your body, yeah? So if you're starting, if you're overweight, if you just need to go out there and walk, go out and walk for 30, 40 minutes. Um, if, you, if you feel that you don't have time to do that first thing in the morning, I understand that people have got all sorts of living situations, they have children, they've got high pressure jobs, etc., etc. You've got to give yourself that time. The, the, the power of working out first thing in the morning and moving that into, because that'll start as a walk and gradually progress on to maybe jogging for, for a minute, walking for a minute, jogging for a minute, walking for a minute, till you can do 10 times one minute and then you can do 20 times one minute and then before you know it, you can run 5K. So very, very small steps and, and make it fun so that you wanna do it long term and you want it to be a lifestyle change gotta be there inserted into your habits um if you're at the point where you're already doing a bit of exercise but you still don't know why, why, why there's lots of fat on you get out there on an empty stomach in the morning hydrate properly before you go get your kit ready so there's no kind of excuses get in the way um set your alarm and go and just get out the door within 15 10 15 minutes of waking up um, and as a slow jog, and just keep that really, really easy or recovery run where your heart rate is, the magic number is always 65% of heart rate, right? But just keep it really, really low so that you can kind of be going along, you're talking at the same time, it's pretty comfortable, but you're doing, you're getting out there, you're doing it, and whether you're walking or running, you're doing it on an empty stomach, so you're teaching your body to burn fat instead of glycogen, instead of sugar, instead of the food that you're putting it into it uh, as a primary f fuel source because your body, whilst you've been sleeping, has been fasting the whole time. So just make your body into a fat metabolizing machine that way. And then that will progress on to, okay, let's do that three, four days a week. And then the other stuff can be your high intensity sessions. So your hard session midweek and then your long run at the weekend. And they can be... Um, they can be fueled because it's more important for your body to be in optimal shape in order to in order to train hard and etc. Yeah, but 80% of the time my runs are fasted and I, I turn my body into a fat metabolizing fat metabolizing machine, a fat burning machine, and the, the effects that that has on ultra running or marathon running means that even at high heart rate, even at half marathon pace, which is like 80, 85% of heart rate. I'm still primarily burning fat as opposed to sugar as a primary fuel source, which means I don't need as many carbohydrates during the race. I don't need as much sugar during the race. I still take it because it's still great for me, um, for you know, to be on full energy, but I don't need that. So if I come into any trouble and the stomach's having issues, I don't actually need that because I'm tapping into my fat sources. So there's lots of benefits to it down the line. Um, Another little hack, and number three is have a bar. There's a bar just on that door behind me, yeah? So it's hanging leg raises. So I go from the night before, set out my kit, so everything's there, the watch, T-shirt I have to wear in this, in this country, uh, shorts, shoes, socks, heart rate monitors on, um, and then I go to the water, coffee. And whilst the coffee's on, I'm doing three times 10 hanging leg raises. So you just hang on your skeleton. So your shoulders are matching your, um, at the same, at the same uh, parallel to the bar. And then you're just pulling your legs up. So you're, you're, you're keeping your body as, as still as possible. And you're just working your lower, lower abs, all your core and your hip flexors as well. Um, so you're getting a really, really strong V shape. Uh, and your abdominals are really strong, and actually kind of pop them out. There's no better exercise for abs, for having that kind of shredded look that most guys look for, um, and most athletes look for. I don't know why. I don't know why you would have an athlete that's kind of like at five to ten percent body fat and wouldn't have abs, but there are they are out there. 
Um, but if you want a strong core, if you want to be able to finish races strong, that's your secret. So those three things. So number one, Train first thing in the morning. I'm gonna put these in a different order. Train first thing in the morning, fasted 80% of the time. So all your easy runs, recovery runs, and even walking if you're just getting into it, train first thing in the morning, no excuses. Before you even get out there, hanging leg raises. Um, if you can't yet, in the beginning, get your legs up, then just bring your knees up to your, to your uh, stomach, and then slowly raise, it's, like, it's all about being still, engaging your engaging your core. And then number three, eating. Just make sensible choices. So when you go to the supermarket, make sure you have a full stomach so you're making good choices. Online shopping is better for you if you, you know, to make better choices. So you online shop once you've eaten, so you're not making silly choices. Simple as that. But then you're eating smaller meals. So smaller portions, six to eight times a day, instead of your typical traditional three times a week, uh, three times a day eating huge meals. But there's obviously a surplus afterwards. What happens to that surplus? If you're not in shape, if you're not built muscle and you have a lean frame, then that's gonna be turning into fat and doing you no favors at all. Those are the three tips to burn fat and use running to burn fat and get in the best shape possible.